Hello, welcome to the Diabetes Roller Coaster module. You may be wondering what that's all about, but if you hold on to your seats, you'll find out soon. My name's Emma Wilmot, I'm the Chair of the Diabetes Technology Network, and I'm a consultant diabetologist in Derby. I'm Nick Rycroft, a type 1 diabetic and co-founder of the Derby Type 1 Diabetes Group. So I'm going to hand over to Nick, who's going to give us his perception on the Diabetes Roller Coaster. Anyone with type 1 diabetes will recognise many of the graphs shown here. This is what we talk about when we talk about the roller coaster. And most of us have been there, done it, and got the t-shirt several times. But with the uh, introduction of the Libra data, you can start to understand and maybe find a way of actually uh, making changes to your regime, which will allow you, in effect, to control this. So let's have a look at some of the reasons why it might happen. Here we have a list of the sort of things that could influence and create that roller coaster or fuel it. Let's take a look at a couple of them with regard to what uh, might actually happen. Snacks when we don't bowl us is a most obvious one, but we sit there in an evening and sometimes we might eat a few biscuits and we forget to bowl us for those and suddenly we find our blood glucose is going skyrocketing. And what happens is we then panic, we probably end up doing something to correct it, and we might end up with a problem later. In addition, let's look at alcohol. We all like a bit of alcohol now and again. But the impact of that overnight can be, for some people, quite serious and often creates the opportunity for a hypo. And we all know what hap happens when we have a hypo at night is we tend not to be patient. We want to raid the fridge and get all the snacks that we can. And what happens is we're back on the roller coaster again. So if you thought this was a list, which was a lot of things to consider, then looking at the next slide, you can see that there's a lot for us to work through. 42 factors can or have been identified effectively making impact on your blood glucose. So if we want to get the roller coaster under some form of control, we need to understand what are the things that we can influence. So let's look at a high uh, rapidly rising glucose. The sort of thing that could cause that, common causes, would be a missed bolus where we've snacked, we've forgotten to take some insulin for it, or we snack and we've, we take the insulin afterwards when we suddenly realise. But the first time that we do it, it's most likely because we're running around, sorting the kids out, wondering what we're going to do for tomorrow, and we just simply forget. And what happens is we end up with a, a high which rapidly um, overwhelms us in an evening. If we go out, for instance, on a, an evening out and with a meal, and it might be to a takeaway that's not one that you know, or a meal that you've got no idea of what the carbs are, then you're going to have to guess. And again, this will impl impact potentially on you getting onto that roller coaster. And then what will happen is, if you're not careful, you go back, as we said, into a hypo situation later where you would overcorrect. And obviously, just to make note, that if you are on an insulin pump, one of the reasons that this might happen in terms of the high could be a set failure. So just to look at those uh, things that might influence or might be common causes for a rapidly falling glucose, remembering that um, a corrective dose uh, given when you're panicking with a high could be the first thing that's going to force you down quickly into a low and on the basis of that, um, corrective doses need to be considered on the basis of how long they take to act. Patience is a really important part of anything that you do with regard to getting off the roller coaster. And stacking of insulin. We all know that when we have insulin in our body, that if we have another meal and we have it rapidly after the first, that there's insulin on board, there's insulin in our system. And if we're not careful, then we can effectively stack that insulin and we find the effect coming through as a rapid drop in blood glucose later. So at this point, I'm now going to hand over to Emma to go through a bit more detail. Thank you, Nick. So here's an example of some Freestyle Libre data that's been downloaded in clinic. 
And there is certainly a bit of a roller coaster going on here. So let's look at it in a bit more detail. So you can see that on the first night, there's a large drop in the glucose from above 20 down into the hypoglycemic range quite quickly. And this is quite often the pattern that you see when a correction dose is too much. Like Nick said, the fridge is then emptied, the glucose rises quickly, and this person's glucose runs high throughout the day. There's then another correction dose given later, and the glucose comes plummeting down, resulting in a hypoglycemia again. And this roller coaster effect can make people feel really lousy and also contributes to higher HbA1c overall. So, the question we all need the answer to is how do we get off the roller coaster? Number one, prevent the hypos. And the Freestyle Libre is a really good device for allowing you to do that. By scanning frequently, you can see when hypos are coming and take action to prevent them. Then we need to think about how we prevent those highs. So trying not to over-treat hypoglycemia is one option, but also ensuring that when you consume carbohydrate that you always cover it with a bolus insulin and try to give that bolus 15 minutes before you eat if possible. And I realise that that is a really challenging thing to do. And try to be as accurate as you can when you are carb counting and deciding what bolus to take. So here's an example of hypo overtreatment. On the left hand side, you can see that this person has become hypoglycemic and they have continued to scan during that hypo. The disadvantage of relying on the Libre when you're hypoglycemic is that there's a five to 10 minute lag. So it will continue to show that you're hypo, even though their glucose might actually have gone back into the normal range. If you continue to treat your hypo during the time it's showing your hypo, you have a massive rebound high as shown here. Ideally, you want to have the scenario on the right hand side where you become hypoglycemic, you rely on your blood glucose and you give your 15 to 20 gram treatment and your glucose comes back into the target range. So when it comes to preventing hypos, scanning regularly is absolutely key. If your glucose starts to drop, stop and think why. What insulin have you got on board? What activity have you done? And more importantly, what are you going to have to do to prevent becoming hypoglycemic? If you'd like some more information on hypoglycemia, I'd highly recommend Pratik Chowdhury's module on hypoglycemia. Another common cause of hypos is the overcorrection of high glucose levels, as Nick Rycroft mentioned earlier. Remember that your quick acting insulin should take three to four hours to bring your glucose back to target. If your glucose is dropping more quickly than this, then that would suggest that your correction dose isn't quite right. And you can see in the example here that the glucose starts off high and very quickly falls into the hypoglycemic range. If this is happening to you, your insulin settings need adjusted. And if you're not confident doing that by yourself, then reach out to your local diabetes team who will support you with this. The next step in preventing those high glucose levels is to get accurate on your carbohydrate counting. Now this can be easier said than done. If you haven't already, I would highly recommend attendance at a structured education program, Daphne Structured Education being the gold standard. There are other opportunities to improve your carbohydrate counting. There are apps and there are websites available that will support you such as Carbs and Cal, My Fitness Pal. And if you haven't recently, then certainly arrange to see your local type 1 diabetes specialist dietitian. If you're still struggling with it, then it's unfortunately a matter of just going back to the basics, getting the scales out and really getting your carbohydrate grams measured down to the nearest gram and trying to be as accurate as you possibly can to try and troubleshoot. If despite all of this, you're still struggling with quite erratic glucose levels, then think about why that might be. Have a look at your injection sites and see whether there's any buildups of fat under the skin. Now this can happen very gradually over a long time and it can be quite difficult to pick up. So it's worth asking your diabetes team to have a look at your injection sites. But if you've got a buildup of fat underneath the skin related to injecting in the same area, then the insulin will sit there and it can cause very erratic glucose levels. So it's always worth going back and having a look and make sure you continue to rotate your injection or your cannula sites too, to avoid these building up. Libre data can really help you if you have lots of variability in your glucose levels. Here on the left, we have an example of where the variability is low. 
you'll see that the dark blue band is quite a narrow band and the glucose levels are generally staying within quite a tight range. Compare that to the one on the right where the blue band is very wide and this suggests that glucose levels are varying from low to high quite a lot between days. You can have a look at this on daily patterns in the LibreLink app and that will help you work out whether you've got high variability or low variability. Make a plan to try and address the variability and review your data regularly to see whether you're getting top of it. There's a lot more information available on glycemic variability in Ian Cranston's module, which is available online. In conclusion, I'd like to really thank Nick Rycroft for coming along today and sharing his insights with us. Thank you, Emma. I think what we would say is that type 1 diabetes is really challenging. And for, on a day-to-day -day basis, we all have difficulties trying to keep ourselves off the roller coaster. But it doesn't go all according to plan, but we have now more data through Libra which can actually be used to help us understand what's going on. Yeah, and I think everybody has those large swings in their glucose, but it's important to stop and think why they're happening and try and prevent them happening in the future. You have a lot of Libre data there and use it. Try to sit down, reflect on what's happening and reach out to your local diabetes team who can support you with interpreting the data and helping improve things. Good luck on your journey.